Hello, welcome back to my tech fan. I'm Igor and I have another laser engraver for this video and looks like uh, this year will be full of 30 watt diode lasers because this is the Atomstack Maker A30 Pro. 33 watt diode laser which combines uh, 6 lasers into one beam to get this big power. And it arrives with F30 Pro Air Assist Kit. And uh, it is really mandatory with this uh, strength because uh, these strong lasers uh, you want to use mostly with the cutting. You can do it with the uh, engraving but for the engraving you will use I don't know, 20 or 30 percent of its power depend on the material of course uh, the engraving size is uh, 400 by 400 millimeters and what I really like with this uh, engraver and with Atomstack engravers that it arrives with a screen for possibility of offline engraving and for me this is important because uh, my engravers are usually down in a basement and I don't want to bring a laptop with me every time I want to engrave something smaller I can just save to the TF card and engrave in offline mode just quickly a few words about the safety. These are tools which require some safety equipment. The base is, are those safety glasses which should be included in the box, but everybody in that room should wear the safety equipment. And also you have to handle somehow those uh, fumes. So use it in a good ventilated room, or uh, if you use it regularly with some kind of enclosure and exhaust those fumes outside of that room. And never leave the engraver without the supervision, just in case to avoid catching a flame. But uh, using an air assist with the cutting uh, reduce this uh, risk uh, very much. And uh, I can see that this box had some hard time. <laughs> it's a little bit damaged. We will see how good is protection inside. So let's see what's in the box. It starts with the cutting mat uh, giveaway. The size is approximately 30 by 40 centimeters and uh, I can feel that it is from steel. I think aluminum is better for this. It is good to see that outside damage of the box didn't affect on the inner parts and double check every corner of this box because there are some hidden parts too. Disclaimer, I have the feeling that somebody is repeating my words. So this product is not a toy and not suitable for people under 15 years. It's good to see that they use uh, 20 by 40 yellow extrusion and interesting some are protected in the foil and some not. The output of the power adapter is uh, 24 volts 6 amperes and I believe that it has to give the current to the pump too. And this is that power for laser module. Output power between 33 and 36 watt and uh, I can feel it is very heavy and I already measured it, 0.7 kilograms. So I hope the mechanics is really good to avoid those vibrations during the fast engraving. And this is it, air assist pump with this knob, we can turn it off or set the strength of it. And uh, here it will get the DC 24 volts uh, power and uh, this is the connection for the tube. And I already have experience with uh, these air assist pumps. Uh, they're not too loud, sometimes uh, the fan on the module is louder and uh, it is very durable. It is better than those Silidicus versions. Pay attention that we have a spare lenses in this bag, so uh, don't throw it out. Installation steps are we start with uh, creating a frame, but uh, not exactly correct instructions because they don't mention that uh, here we have a limit switch too. Maybe this is some kind of for older version where it wasn't included before. So don't forget to place something below it uh, before you assemble this. But for squaring, turn it upside down because it has to be on a flat surface. I'm preparing the frame with bolts from the first bag, but I'm not tightening these bolts yet because I want to turn it upside down and only when it is on flat surface I will tie these bolts. Installing the X gentry and then installing uh, two back legs and installing the front leg and the main box unit. Installing the timing belts, tightening first on the one side and I put some tension on them and tie it on the other side too. Checking the V-slot wheels. A good method to check it if it is not over tight is just to tilt it 45 degree angle and it should move by itself. After tightening the belts, check if this uh, X gentry is squared. This means parallel with this other extrusion here. Mine is already parallel, but uh, if you need an adjustment, then you can lose these two set screws, rotate independently this side and then tie them back. And this is what I like with Atom Stack Engravers, that inside the module is very simple because we have to slide it on this uh, rail. And only one knob we have to use to lock it in the place. And also it will be very comfortable to set the focus, but again uh, I can see that uh, there will be a problem if the module is in lowest position because center of the mass is quite lower than this L extrusion. So definitely for much sharper engraving you should use it approximately in this position. 
from some reason the manufacturers don't really listen to my advices the exception is actually the two trees for example uh, I already mentioned if the center of the mass is on the L extrusion it would be great and less vibration but it is too high in this position okay I understand but if this would be let's say here but of course we have these wheels in the way and then this shaft but it is not really necessary with this system as you can see unnecessary mass is on the moving module this is a stepper motor for the X gentry. It can be fixed somewhere on the side. And same they can do with the Y axis stepper motor. Maybe instead of be, being here to moving with the X gentry, it can be on the back side. Maybe two Y axis stepper motors. I mean, in this more than $1,000 price, they can use two pieces of this Y axis stepper motors to uh, get a higher engraving speeds. But of course, with these higher engraving speeds, uh, we need less vibrations. But if this would be, let's say, here, this solar extrusion, it will be much sharper engraving. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, just take a look of the moving mechanism on the Ender 5 Pro. Cables are not labeled, but according to their length and the shape, it is quite obvious where they go. This one in module I had to press with the Allen key. And the air assist pump, and don't forget, use the air assist only with the cutting, not with the engraving. And now we use some zip ties, but I don't like that Atomstack still don't have a nice solution for this cable management. Tie the zip ties when the model is in this position, then you are sure that it's uh, long enough. So it works, it is not nice. Uh, definitely Atomstack couldn't find some much nicer solution, like with drag chains or something like that, but it works. And this is my final solution for the cable management. Let's connect the cables and as you can see the power from the power adapter will be split to two directions. One goes to the engraver and the other for the pump. Unfortunately this is very ugly solution. Look at these two cables. They are completely in the way if I have to press this emergency stop button. Recently I saw a much nicer solution where they use these cables in a 90 degree angle and it's uh, much nicer and of course they are not in the way of this emergency stop button. And probably not even expensive. Now with this solution we can control this air assist pump only over this knob. So there is no possibility to control it over the software. This is disadvantage for the Lightborn users because there theoretically we should enable the air assist for the cutting and disable it for the engraving. For laser GLBL users it is not important because there we can do only one operation at a time. So for the engraving it will be disabled and before I start the cutting I will enable this pump and finish that operation. It is not too loud and it is quite strong. Before I start with engraving I want you to be clear with the noise. So approximately I am standing here and I notice unfortunately this fan is always on. So let's see the noise with uh, on. I'll try to talk next to it. And now let's check the noise from the pump. And almost I have a feeling that this is quieter than this cooling fan. And now both together. And now we came closer now, so probably I will narrate the video because this will be too loud as a background noise. First very important step is setting the focus on the top of this surface. For this I have to use this desensor and it is very comfortable to use only one knob on the front side of this module. Safety glass is on. And here you can see my settings in the line burn and always I will use the constant power mode off for the engraving and also I will not use the air assist for the engraving only for the cutting. This was recorded in real time speed and uh, basically approximately 4000 or 6000 on 60% power is uh, great for the engraving. Now I want to do one experiment you know engraving in lowest in the highest position of this module to see if there is any difference see, for the vibration. So this was in the lowest position and now setting in the highest position and doing the same engraving using the same G code here. And for the first look uh, there is no big difference see, between this lowest and highest position of the engraving. Only big magnifying I can see some small differences. So this is good sign. The rest of the engraving I will use this cutting panel and uh, then I need some uh, experimenting with the grayscale image, but I already have some experience with the 30 watt diode laser from previous video. 
and uh, this is the test engraving grayscale image from 100 to 0 position uh, 10,000 millimeters per minute and 50% power and basically uh, only in this middle part I have this uh, grayscale range and then uh, this is the image which I usually use for this test engraving the Padme from the Star Wars and I always like to test with uh, some camera to see if the face will be recognized and uh, not only the face but also the eyes also recognized with this uh, camera and a reminder everything was done with the constant power mode off this means dynamic power and now I'll use the air assist because I will do some cutting and this is speed up eight times very sharp cuttings and uh, up to 800 millimeters per minute it was cut in, uh, on the and even cutting out part is very sharp but on back side I can see that this laser is not really squared and here I saw only one difference from the previous uh, scalp fan uh, Certiva Diet laser because it was able to cut on 1000 mm per minute too. And then typical experiment uh, doing uh, cutting without air and with air assist. And I think it is quite obvious that always with the air assist it is not only the sharper but it is also safer because it prevents some flames during the engraving, uh, during the cutting. And the thickest plywood I have here is 5mm, so I glued together two 5mm plywood, so I have a little bit more than 10mm in thickness. And uh, of course I will use the air assist, and here I will left this footage completely, uh, I starting with 50mm per minute speed. I know this is too slow, and I want to show you why you shouldn't leave without supervision the laser engraver. The next one was with 100mm per minute speed. Then 200, of course, it speeds up. 300, and this was on 400. And I know about this problem, so you can see completely burned even on the other side. So yes, 200 millimeters per minute, it was enough for cutting in one pass. Uh, but you will see soon, it is better to use uh, bigger speeds and uh, in uh, several passes. So here I'm using uh, 400 millimeter speed in two passes. I forgot to enable the air assist only after the second line you will see one burned uh, edge there. And then some cylindrical cutting on 500 and again on 400 millimeters per minute speed. And uh, on 400 millimeter speed it was cut and out completely. You can see very sharp and clean uh, edges even on the other side and it fits perfectly. On 500 mm per minute speed it was almost cut in, but not completely. And now MDF wood. This is my typical experiment. Here I have uh, 20 watt and 30 watt diode lasers on 2, 3 and 400 mm per minute speed. And uh, I try here even 600 mm and y you can see the 400 mm per minute speed is the biggest I could use for cutting in one pass. But 600 was quite close too. and they look very sharp and nice. And now moving to the black acrylic, this is 3mm black acrylic and I will use the same settings like with this MDF wood. And this is the first time I experienced this problem with this cutting panel. It is a little bit hard to use it with the small objects. And now let's see these cuttings. On 2 and 400mm per minute it was cut out, but on 600mm per minute it was closed but not completely cut but the edges are very sharp and nice and it is time to do the engraving on the stainless steel and these two are engraved with the 33 watt uh, scalp fan laser module in my previous video and i will use again 200 millimeters per minute speed to see what will i get with this uh, a30 module this is only the end of the engraving the engraving looks very strong on 200 millimeters per minute let's clean it with isopropyl alcohol Very strong and deep engraving, even though 200 mm per minute, so very similar like uh, with this engraver. And just to illustrate you how deep is it. Another metal engraving, anodized aluminum. So we cannot engrave directly on aluminum, but if it is analyzed, basically we can burn off that uh, layer and we can get nice graphics like this here. 
And what I like with the engraving of anodized aluminum that it is uh, not sensitive to the settings so we can use a big range of the speeds and there are no danger of the flames or fumes and similar. These anodized aluminum tags are sent to me by Chorbarka company. I present them a few weeks ago in a separate video. And one more thing which is important to me, I want to try the offline engraving. So I will prepare here an NC file and then I will try to engrave without a computer. This is laser GRBL and I am preparing the file like I would do with the normal USB laser engraving or cutting. And only difference is now I am going to quick save and I am saving this NC file to the SD card and then I am inserting to the laser engraver. Carve and then I can see the file in the listing and first I am using the contour scanning and it will do the boundary check to check the position of the position of the engraving and then I choose uh, one pass yes and it will do the engraving like I would uh, do it over the USB mode. Confirm and it's finished. And now conclusions. Very powerful and strong laser module and definitely it is very good that it arrived with the air assist kit and it should be standard nowadays with these strong laser modules. And uh, interesting, uh, what was really present surprise that uh, we have the same vibrations sharp uh, uh, engraving in the lowest or highest position of this laser module. So maybe this is thanks to this uh, holder of the module, it's not just a small plate, but it is actually some kind of rail which is very stiff in the, this direction when it's moving in along the Y axis. It is still very loud and not so loud like a Sculpfans uh, laser module. And um, it would be good if the fan of the module would turn off when it is not operating. This mechanic solution is not really my favorite because the stepper motors are on moving parts. So X stepper motor is moving together with the module and Y stepper motor is moving together with the gentry, but they could be fixed. But basically now with this 0.7 kilogram laser module, maybe the mass of these stepper motors became negligible. But definitely very nice sharp engraving I got even in the lowest position of this laser module. Uh, with this solution, the kit uh, there is this pump can be operated only with this knob, uh, so you cannot use the advantage of the light burn where you can have I don't know. Uh, engraving without air assist and then some cutting lines with air assist pump because it cannot be enabled by the software. If you want to do this you need some DIY solutions with the relay. It's not so complicated but uh, yes it is not for everybody. And definitely my favorite, uh, really I like this solution for offline engraving because I mentioned my engravers are down in uh, base cement and uh, when I want to do some smaller engraving and cutting and I just save the NC file to the SD card and then I don't have to bring my laptop with me down in a basement. I'm still missing some better solution for the positioning of the engraving because it is very hard to see the laser spot through this small window. Maybe a solution could be a removable shield with the magnets and then we can do the boundary check and place back the shield. Or my method is gluing the tooth stick to the side of the laser module. I explained that method in the A20 review video. Or of course you can always use the camera method which is part of the Atomstack Maker. And with that it is very, very simple because you can even have uh, several objects on the plate and do the engraving after the positioning in the light burn. Additional experience you know through lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.